Let's welcome former Louisiana Governor Bobby Jindal. Great to see you, Bobby. Thank you for having me. Good evening. Okay, Governor, we've got at least 23 states with now specific plans to reopen. Tonight, the president at his press conference really making the big push about testing. So we had CVS, Walgreens, Rite Aid. They're talking about drive-through testing. Uh, in other words, that people across the country could go to drugstores and do that. Uh, this is a way forward. You think this is a positive development, or do you think it can't be done? No, I think this is a great development. I'm glad to see states are reopening. I'm glad to see they're doing it gradually. I'm glad to see they're doing it based on science and public health. But I think the American people are ready to get back to work in a safe manner. And I think testing is a key part of that. One of the things I thought was very impressive today was when you step back and think how much progress we've made in just a matter of weeks. You know, when this started, we didn't have the test. Then we had tests. Then the test took several days to process. Now we have 15-minute tests, and now we're developing serology tests. We're developing tests based on saliva. We're, ba we're developing tests that can be done at home. We need more of that. We need more testing capacity. But uh, I think the president and vice president were exactly right. This has been a great public-private partnership. Testing will be important so that as we reopen the economy, we can monitor spikes. We can respond to those spikes. We don't have to get back to where we were in the spring and shut down the entire economy. But I, I think it's a great sign that states are beginning to reopen responsibly. I think it's a great sign that you've got the private and public sectors ramping up our testing capacity. That's great American ingenuity. And I think that in the next few weeks, as you heard today, we're going to have incredible testing capacity and new tests that we don't have right now that will be able to, to process the results even more quickly and more accurately. Yeah, so this is the headline. This is the big news that, in other words, CVS, Walgreens, Rite Aid, they're talking about pharmacies. Certainly here in, in New York State, the governor of New York is talking about now with an executive order saying, yes, pharmacies should do more testing of COVID-19. That's the big push forward because the CBO is now forecasting U.S. GDP overall could drop 40 percent from the pandemic. That's a huge hit. Small businesses, big businesses are on the brink of collapse. Talking Virgin Atlantic and J.C. Penney as well. The New York governor is saying now one in four New Yorkers are infected. Way more people may have antibodies and immunity. And now in, we're hearing out of India, Governor. India is the Serum Institute there. They're the biggest maker of uh, vaccines in the world. They're talking about moving forward before the fall with the vaccine developed by Oxford University. So good news on that front. Your quick take on that. Look, you've got dozens of vaccines in the testing phases. Normally, it takes a year and a year and a half, best case scenario, to mass produce, develop a safe vaccine. I'm hoping we can do it more quickly. You've got companies racing against the clock to get it done. Obviously, once we have a vaccine, we can all get back to our normal lives. In the meantime, we can't wait for that vaccine. That's certainly great uh, hope and there's great optimism. In the meantime, we need to gradually reopen our economy. People need to be smart. Even as the economy gets reopened, we're not going back to the pre-vaccine practices. We need to practice social distancing and, and be aware of our surroundings. But look, I, I'm, I've got, I'm a big believer in competition. I'm a big believer in public-private uh, co cooperation. And I think that the progress we've seen in the last few months, last several weeks, has been remarkable. I'm extremely optimistic we will get a vaccine even sooner than the experts predict. Once we have that vaccine, our lives can get back to normal. And I know we all are eager for that to happen. Yeah, your take on what's going on now in places like the state of Michigan with the draconian orders against, you know, doing gardening or, or lawn care. Uh, now the state legislature there has an oversight body of the Democrat governor of Michigan, she's pushing back, saying, I may do extend the quarantine of the state even longer uh, because of uh, what is going on with lack of social distancing and things like protests. She's saying, basically, World War II, you didn't see protesters lining up at the state capitol. We've got the Democrats pushing back, saying we want now, Nancy Pelosi is talking about a guaranteed income. There's a big push for renters in cities like Chicago, Detroit, Los Angeles to not pay rent. As, the, as governors are shutting down, you see this pushing forward, Governor. Your take on all of that. Well, look, a couple of things. I, look, I was governor during hurricanes and, and other public crises. Obviously, you want to protect human life, but you look at what the Michigan governor has done. You look at what the Louisville mayor has done. Some of these officials aren't practicing common sense, and I think people get frustrated with that. Like in Michigan, she eventually backed off, but at first she was telling people, you can go in a boat without a motor, but you can't go fishing in a boat with a motor. She was telling people, you can go into stores and you can't buy you know, seeds to, for your garden. That kind of stuff makes no sense, and I think it frustrates people. It's not furthering public health. It's not protecting them. It's the nanny state. You had the Louisville mayor telling people they couldn't go to a, they couldn't drive in their cars on Easter Sunday, go to church, 
even if they wanted to stay in their cars to listen to their pastor, that's completely ridiculous. It's a violation of our, our, our rights as Americans, of our constitutional rights, and also just offends public uh, se common sense. So when, when you see politicians overreach like that, it undermines their legitimate efforts to keep us safe. They legitimately are telling us to practice social distancing, to avoid large crowds, and we should be doing that. We should telecommute if we can do that. And I know many of our, our heroes can't do that. They, their jobs require them to be on the front lines. So I, I think when these, these politicians overreach, it undermines confidence in our government and truly common sense public health measures. Now, you talked about Speaker Pelosi. The Democrats would love to use—you remember what Rahm Emanuel said, not to waste a crisis. They'd love to use this crisis to continue to grow the role and scope of government. Even though she delayed relief for small businesses, now they're talking about all kinds of ridiculous items. You remember in the earlier version of the House bill, they wanted to do things of the CARES Act. They wanted to do things like mandate to airlines the, the new Green Deal requirements. They wanted to mandate corporate diversity requirements on their boards, all these unrelated items. And again, they're undermining the, the public's faith in, in, the, in our leaders, in our government. The reality is, this is a public health crisis. Let's have a, a narrow, targeted government response that addresses that. The best way to help people pay their rent, the best way to help people to, to put food on their table, so they don't have to go to food banks, is to get the economy going again. In the meantime, we do need targeted emergency assistance, and that's what that's what uh, the administration has been doing. But the idea that we're going to create permanent government programs, let's not kid ourselves. The, the government's borrowing trillions of dollars it doesn't have. Nobody in D.C. is talking about paying it back. Yes, let's help people right now through this emergency, but the best way to help them is get them back to work. Governor, great to have you on. Come back soon. Thank you for having me.